Fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to the third installment of Advanced Railways. If you haven't seen the previous two videos or the beginner or intermediate tutorials for railways, I highly recommend you watch them before this one. So recently we started looking at up and down lines, and this is really the core basis of most advanced railways on OpenTTD. We then looked at the more advanced signals you can use, like entry and exit signals, and indeed path signals like last episode. Today we'll be looking at stations and waypoints, so let's have a quick look at some of the stations we've had so far and identify their type. First up we have this kind of station here. This is called a terminus station. It's called such because the train comes in one way and it has to go back out the way it came in because it terminates the end of the line. It's stopped. Okay, You can't go through that station. You have to just stay there and then go back the way you came if you can. So that's a terminus station and this is a basic one with an up and down line going into it and a crossover junction in front. Now you can improve on this slightly because these signals here aren't actually necessary because uh, the game has an inbuilt mechanic. It's kind of like the end of a station has a path signal there, but we'll have a look at that later. And then next up we've got this one. Well, this one's actually the same. It's also a terminus station. The only difference is, is we've got four platforms here instead of two. And again, it goes into an up and down line and there's a crossover section in the middle. So these are represent the basic terminus that a lot of people use in OpenTTD. They can be improved upon. They're not the most efficient way of doing it, but with the path signals, it's not too bad. You're unlikely to get de uh, deadlocks unless you've got junctions and stations really close to each other. So whilst it may not be the most efficient, it is quite easy, it is quite simple, and it is relatively cheap too. Then we've got stations like this. Okay, this particular station is often referred as a row row station or a drive through, depending on the type of way you lay your tracks out. So um, here we're not too interested in the tracks, we're just interested in the fact that the trains can go in one way and out the other. Sometimes this is in both directions, sometimes not. In this particular example, the train can only enter in one direction and out the other. The next type of station we're going to look at is a spread station. And you can do a spread station by placing part of a station in one place, holding control and placing the other part of the station wherever you want it. You then get this joint station section where you can do a separate station or it will let you join it to an existing station. If I click this, we get our new platform, but this actually counts as one whole station. Now if you want to know more about st um, spread stations, then see tu uh, tutorial episode 18 in the playlist, and episode 18 talks all about spread stations. But essentially, you can connect them up in any way you like to your up and down lines, whether it be something simple or something complex. Mm, for example, something like this. Now that isn't efficient, and the signalling wouldn't be that great, but it would probably technically work so it's legitimate but that is a spread station that's the important part where platforms don't um, where there's a gap between platforms and it doesn't have to be singular you can have two platforms over here and then a little distance and two platforms over here like this it doesn't even have to be even so let's quickly build some of the types of stations we've worked with over here, I'm going to put in a terminus station. So there we are. We're going to have that there. We're going to have a um, we're going to have a row row station over here. There we are, and we're going to have um, a combination of the two over here. Yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a combined terminus and row row. So for a terminus station. Like I said, you don't have to put the signals in front of it. You can go straight out with the junction because of the fictitious signal in front of the platform, the invisible one. So, and then we can put our up and down line signals in. Now with the row row station, you have to go in one way and out the other. So make your decision which way you're going in, connect the lines up and put a signal. This signal will let the train decide which platform it wants to go to if one's available. 
Then on the exit, we're going to need a signal for each of the exits on a row row, and then you can connect them up and go wherever you want to go. Now, uh, I just need to connect these. Now, this is not the most sophisticated way of connecting them, but it will do for purposes of our example. And then uh, down here, we have what we're going to have is a combine terminus and row row. Now, so for this one, it's like a, uh, a row row station in the fact that you can go in one way. So here's the main line going in. And this would be the line then going uh, let's just get rid of that and that would be the line going out so we build it kind of ooh, we build it like this as if it's a row row okay uh, let's just do it like this as an example okay so that's not far off a row row okay you can go in one way and out the other um, that that is not right there we go, that's right. So yes, we go in one way and out the other. But what you can do is you can come in the other way as well. So you can come in this way and then go out that way. So you can row row from both directions. And if you want to, you can terminate and double back on yourself. So we'll, uh, we'll see that one in action soon as well. Now the difference with these ones is you have to have signals on the inside. And I find some of the best types of signals to do that is the uh, path signal which allows you to go through the back. Okay, so to look at how these stations work, I've employed the use of a number of trains. First up, we have our terminus station. Our first train goes in, takes up platform number one. The next train comes along, that's going to take up platform number two. Now train number three is going to come, and is it going to get there before train number one tries to get out? No. Train number one has already reserved a path out and is exiting the station. There we are, and train number three will go in too. Works quite well. Lots of flowing in and out, and you can see how that they all wait at the edge of the station if necessary. Moving on to the row row now, and you can see how the trains just come in one side. And when they finished loading and unloading, they just go straight out the other. This, again, is quite efficient and actually better than the terminus. As a general rule, I tend to use row rows quite a bit. And the reason is this. Trains going in one end and then exiting out the other don't interfere with each other. So if you've got a train leaving a row row, it doesn't stop trains going in to a row row. They can come in the back, fill up them, however many platforms you've got available in your row row, and it just doesn't matter. Whereas with a terminus, you have to wait for a train to finish crossing this midsection before a new train can go in. So only one train can do a movement in and out of this station at once. Whereas you can have multiple trains going in and out of a station at a row row. Let's head down the track now and catch up. And we're going to see a little bit about how this um, station here works. The Terminus Row Row Station. So, the first train comes along and it's going to enter the station by the first platform because it needs the platform uh, to unload its passengers. It's got an order to stop here at Rond Hall. It does so briefly and the second train uses the other platform on the opposite side. Now, the third train comes along and it will take that first platform again. You can see here that if all the trains are going in the same direction, they can quite easily flow through this uh, terminus row row. Now I've put another terminus station at the end here so the trains will come back again. So let's see what happens now when these first trains come back to our terminus row row. Now what I've told the trains to do here, and it's quite important, is to come into Rond Hall after going to uh, Drenninghead and then go back to Drenninghead again. So we're actually going to see them turn around in this row row as if it's a terminus because it is kind of the trains are coming into the station and as long as you have the setting enabled in the game settings for trains to terminate in stations then that is exactly what they will do as you can see that train just did it there this train coming in is about to do it now i think oh no he's going straight through that one had an order to go straight through the station 
and completely ignore it. So if we look at the orders there, uh, I told it, uh, where are we looking, to go non-stop right through. Um, that one doesn't, that one's terminating and that one's going back. So you can see how they can go straight through, how they can terminate and go back the other way, and they can go through and stop on their way through. Quite a versatile station, but also if it's in a busy area, it can get quite clogged. Now spread stations can be used to make drive-through stations. This is where your main line just goes straight through, like this, straight through the land, straight through the middle of the station. And what you can do is then you can have an entrance one side, eh, with a waiting area if you wish. Uh, let's give it a bit of a waiting area, go down the hill here. And then connect it up to your line. So they can come in, they can either go to the station or straight through, and come out the other way. You do the same going the other way into the station and come out the other way. Let's just get rid of that tree so we can see. There we are. And just put some signals on there so we can have some path signals, I suppose. Path signals are quite good for this. Path signals, I use them for everything. So, signals going in and going out. One going into the station, one going out. And the same this way, but in the other direction. So the trains get to choose whether they turn off the main line and stop at the station, or whether they just plain carry on. A really good solution if you don't want your trains to terminate at all. If you don't want your trains to come to Plenpool and go back the way they came, this is really good. Now we've already looked at standard terminus stations and here we can see a four track st uh, terminus station going into a two track main line and this, these four platforms allow for lots of trains to load and unload at the same time but it still has the inherent problem that lots of these terminus um, simple stations have of only allowing one train to move through this junction block at once. Well, what you can do is you can double up your entrances and double up your exits. And let me show you how that works. What you do is you can just strip away the, um, this, if you've already built it, to improve. And we can put in just a bit of track here like this. There we are, just to start us off. We're going to need some signals here soon. What we do is we put one of these lines as the incoming line. And we pair the platforms up. So, platforms 1 and 2 become a pair and platforms 3 and 4 become a pair. Okay, and what we do is we put one entrance into each pair and one exit out of each pair. So, we've got an entrance going into pair 1 and 2. We just put a junction uh, in front of them like so. And then uh, we need an entrance going into 3 and 4. So what we do is we bring a line out here and connect it up to our entrance line. Then we need some exits. We need an exit going out of 3 and 4. Well, that's quite easy. We just go out that way and, well, just kind of link up with this line somehow. That'll do. And then we need to exit out of 1 and 2. So we've got an entrance into 1 and 2, an entrance into 3 and 4, an exit out of three and four, but now we need an exit out of one and two. And to do that, you can either get a tunnel here, or my preference, build a bridge. So you build a little bridge on the way out, and hey presto, you've got uh, two lines going in and two lines going out of a four track station, allowing it to become a lot more efficient. And when I'm building these, I like to put a path signal here and not one any closer to the station. This allows the train to decide which direction it needs to go um, for what platform. We just need a crossover here. There we are. So there we go. Uh, that is essentially how to build um, a double entrance and double exit into a four-laned station. Now you can expand upon this. If you want to do it for six tracks, you could probably just put them in groups of three, like this and this. And in those groups of three, you can just bring in an extra line like that and like that. Just connect them up to the junction. That way you've got, um, if 
we just hide the trees a second there we go that way you've got three platforms for um, each entrance and three platforms for each exit much more than this you're going to start wanting to get loads of entrances and loads of exits and expand your station that way and that is where you often need something like this a quadruple entrance and quadruple exit station this station allows for fantastic flow let's see it in action okay so here we go we're gonna have loads of trains now entering this and we're gonna do it at high speed so you can see them flowing in and out platform one and two has been used quite a lot but as we get trains blocking up the exits we get lots of trains going in from different ways look at them all flowing in and out now bearing in mind I've brought too many trains down on this track and this is just looping round to a waypoint and back again and as they clear out you can see the new trains coming back in filling up and going you can see that trains are moving in and out at the same time now because there's lots of trains moving here at once you can see there's lots waiting there could be some loading in the station um, but you get a lot of trains moving all at the same time in and out those platforms and it's quite an efficient way to go for large stations so now we're going to have a quick look at waypoints waypoints allow you to send a train to a particular place so you can force it to do something for example uh, we can do a spur that comes off the line here like this and put a waypoint there it's like a station but it's not it doesn't accept passengers it doesn't generate passengers it doesn't really do anything so we've got this stage uh, this train here and we're just gonna Di oh, dive into its orders and delete all its orders and we're going to tell it to go to this waypoint and that's exactly what it will do if we check out this train once it's nipped to the depot I oh, hang on this train 31 is going to beat it to it so once trains 31's got going down the line it's going to spur off the main line and go to our waypoint and that is exactly what they're for they're just to send trains to a particular place and it actually went to that waypoint on its way through. So you might be saying, what are the useful uses of waypoints? Well, we have a few to show you. Here is one right here, creating sidings. Uh, I said useful and I use the term very loosely. For example, if you have a particular train you want to just, oh, I don't know, send down to a particular location, you can tell the train, hey you, just, just go here. And you can send it on its way. And that's exactly what it will do. It will head out and go down, just as we did previously. And sometimes people do these sidings just for fun and not really for any other particular reason than just to store trains in. Sometimes this is good uh, if you want to make timetables and some sort of realistic system, but as a general rule, it's not very useful for practical gameplay. The next example is... Let's say, for example, you've got a number of trains going through Rondal, and let's say that some of them don't want to go to Rondal at all. You want them to bypass it. Well, that is a good thing you can do. You can go, well, if we don't want to go to Rondal, perhaps we want to go out on this line down here and then back down there, just bypassing the station altogether like this. Now, how do we get them to choose that line? Well, we can force them down it with a waypoint. There's the waypoint, and what we do is we say, hey train, right, after you've gone to Drenninghead down here, on your way back to Little Slongving Way, which is all the way back up here, we want you to go via this waypoint. So we just slip in the order there, tell it to go to the waypoint, and once the trains start moving again, then the trains will, should, use this waypoint instead of going through the station. Yep, there we go, train went through the waypoint, they went through the waypoint. So we have directed the trains around a particular piece of track we don't want them to use. And you can use waypoints to direct trains around all sorts of bits of track for all sorts of reasons. 
Okay, so for our final example this episode, we are looking at what is going to be a Roro Terminus with a Terminus. That's right, it's a little bit weird like that. Now, the this uh, station down, down here that we were looking at, this is a Roro Terminus where a train can terminate, uh, go backwards or go through, as we looked at earlier in the episode. This station over here is exactly the same except instead of having uh, two tracks uh, in its main, two platforms in its main segment, it's got four. But it's also got a terminus part to it as well. Look, we're going to have trains coming out of here. Like this. And you're like, what? How do we do that? Well, first things first, let's see how the trains react within this station. There we are. The trains are coming through and they are entering the station and if we pop the signals in just like that, you can see that the trains coming from both directions and uh, whilst they wait, they wait for each other to cross just as previously, but they can use multiple platforms at the same time. There we are. And if we speed it up a little, we'll see them all flowing in and out all different ways. But what if we want a service not to pass through? All these trains are just going straight through this station. What if we want them to terminate in these side ones? Well, this is where we bring our waypoints in. So let's build a better track down here like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go like that. It's a dirty junction. It's not very efficient, but it's a junction nonetheless. And you see, uh, one of the trains didn't have an option and it ends up going into our terminus because the line in front of it was full. Now here we've got a problem because this train now wants to continue up the line to the north, but it can't. It's ended up in a terminus part. So we need to fix this in both ways. We need to be able to tra tell trains that we want to travel through the station to use the through station part. And we want to tell, tell trains that we want to use the terminus to use the terminus part. So let's just uh, put an extra bit of track on here like this. And we'll just let that train get out of the way. There we go. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to put some signals on first. There we go. And there we go. Yeah, that'll do. So this is where we use our waypoints. What we do is we get our waypoint and we put one waypoint before one set of the station and we put another waypoint before the other set of the station. Okay, so we can rename this to mint field through and we can main it, name this one to mint field term for terminus. There you are, I'll do. Then what we need to do is set the orders up. Now all these trains are coming into the terminus and we don't want them to. So after they've been to Fort Dunningstone Mines, the, not mines, station there, we give them an order to go to the waypoint. There we are. From now on, trains coming in from the south will only go and into this middle section. They won't use the terminus station because they're heading to the waypoint on the way in. So what now if we want um, trains to actually go and use the terminus? Well, that's fairly straightforward as well. Let's clone this train here and get rid of its orders and put some brand new orders in. So the order is go to our first station and then on the way in, come to this waypoint before heading in to that station. And it's simple as that. This train will now only ever use that waypoint. So we'll find some trains coming along the line very soon. Let's see, where's our first one that we've just created? Is that in there? I think it might be. Yes, it is. Or is this one? No, nope, that's in there. The first one is uh, waiting for a free path. But it's traveling along and it switches lines, goes through the waypoint and into the terminus part of the station. This is my favorite use for waypoints, along with the ones that I've already mentioned. Well, that's the end of this episode. Next time we'll be looking at junctions and depots. And I invite you to leave your thoughts, ideas and questions all down in the comments section below. If you want to know anything more about me, the videos I do, the things that you can get involved with and the big open TTD events that I do, head out to my website at masterhellish.net and also the links to all those places are in the description of the video. 
In the credits you'll find a link to subscribe to me if you want to follow me and you're not doing so already, a link to the tutorial series so you can follow this series better, and also a link to my Let's Play series so you can follow me and actually watch me playing the game with mods in for my Season 4. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until I see you next time, goodbye.